Fantastic. Good to see both of you. Thanks for um, joining me. Uh, both sides of the argument have got some big decisions to make as to how to play the next part of this process. If Theresa May were to lose a vote next week, how would you like those in favour of Brexit to play that situation? Well, of course, there is the question of whether the vote even takes place, because at the European Council, we're not seeing any sign of any substantial change to the deal being offered, in which case the Speaker may even decide next week that he wouldn't even allow a vote on it. But even Let's if there were... Let's assume, though, that the were, Speaker deems uh, the grants that an extension provisionally being granted sure. is a substantial change. Sure, I think he'd probably have to, to be fair. Uh, but if that does happen, I'm still not sure that deal is going to go through. Uh, and indeed, uh, Chris Mason was making the point earlier that the Prime Minister's speech last night, if anything, was pushing more MPs against the deal mm. rather than towards supporting the deal. Um, at the moment, I really don't think I could. I look at that deal and I see the way in which it effectively, potentially, handcuffs the UK mm. into a customs union with the EU. The backstop in Northern Ireland is a situation that we could never escape from without the EU's permission. And my instinct right now is that having a clean break at the end of mm. next week uh, would mean that we could very swiftly move on Despite to Despite the fact that the TUC talks. and the CBI say this would be a complete disaster. They well, know the, what they're talking well, about, don't they? Well, they also said that they wouldn't want Brexit at the time of the referendum three years ago. It's unsurprising that they're saying that now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were told at the time of the referendum by people like that that there'd be a massive hike in unemployment as a result of a vote to leave. And of course, last week we saw record employment figures mm. and unemployment falling yet again. I think the British pub, I think what, from what Theresa May did say last night, I think mm. what, where she was right is that the public do want Brexit to happen and they want MPs to get on with it. And if that means a clean break at the end of next week, then so be it. What would you do from the Labour Party's point of view? Well, I wouldn't vote for this bad deal. You wouldn't vote for it either? No, it's a terrible deal. Um, that doesn't mean that we should in any way countenance a no-deal Brexit. We have to extend. We have to sort this out. We have to reset the way that we talk but to But hold on other. a minute. The European Union is talking about allowing an extension if the deal goes through. They're it's allowing not saying... a short extension if the deal goes through. Right. If the deal doesn't go through, I think we're going to need a much longer extension. Where but the we Prime can... Minister says she won't ask for it. Well, the Prime Minister is going to have to stop being so recalcitrant and mm. actually start behaving like the Prime but Minister let's look of the at whole what country. Can, you can't control what, uh, the Labour Party can't control what the Prime Minister does, but it can control what it does. What tactics would you like to see Jeremy Corbyn deploying as we go into next week? Well, I think they have to say, uh, they have to bet the Carl Wilson Amendment, for example, which would say, you, if you want us to pass some form of a deal, there has to be a confirmatory referendum. Uh, I think that is a compromise. Which would take about a year to organise. Yeah, fine. Let's have a year's extension. That's not out of the bounds of reality. Well, then we'd have to have European Parliament elections in a few weeks' time, which mm. would add to the, the chaos and the confusion, frankly, well, amongst the public about all this. How much more chaotic can this get, Jonathan? Have you seen the way that the country is, is in the moment? We're on fire. I'm interested. We're just trying to make sure that we can deal with something that brings everybody back together. And nobody has taken that approach so mm. far. And I think this confirmatory referendum is the best way of dealing with trying to please leavers and remainers, something that just has not happened since the 23rd of June 2016. I'm interested why you prefer no deal to the idea of, say, a year's extension, you maybe get a new Prime Minister and you have another crack at producing a withdrawal deal which is more aligned with what you would like. Would that not be better? I don't think so. We've, no. we, this has been going on for literally two years as of the end of the next mm. week and the deal that has, the, the government and the EU have come up with I think is wholly unacceptable and the House of Commons has twice said it's wholly unacceptable. There is no evidence whatsoever that there's going to be any material change to that deal if we extend. It simply adds to the uncertainty. People say regularly business wants certainty. Mm. Well the most certain thing you could do is say we'll leave at the end of next week and that's decided rather than saying let's have another year of uncertainty which is what Emma is proposing. I'm sorry but business 88% of business as was exemplified in that letter from the CBI and the TUC when you've got capital and labour coming together to say no we absolutely reject a no deal maybe we should listen to both the workers and the bosses. Why aren't you doing that? Theresa May and the government have listened to all kinds of people over the last mm. two years. Um, I'm afraid that the, the, the way that she has handled the negotiation has not been perfect. I mean, that's quite clear. Uh, but equally, the EU has uh, played its cards in a way which has been effectively to try and keep the UK under its thumb. Uh, in what way has it done that? 
Well, in the way the negotiations have been handled, the fact that it, di it dictated the sequence of the negotiations. But it's the UK opting the out, isn't it? So if you're in a club and you ask to leave, it's not unreasonable for the club to say, this is the rules of the club. Well, we're not going to be members of the club anymore, so we mm. don't have to obey the rules. I think Theresa May showed enormous goodwill at the beginning of the process, saying we'll accept your sequencing on the negotiations. I think she was wrong to do that in retrospect, although at the time I think it was her mm. trying to show goodwill towards the, the other side in the negotiation. Can I ask both of you quickly, just from a personal point of view, a lot of people are messaging the BBC <coughs> saying they're anxious about this. Do you feel anxious about the scale of the decisions coming our way in the next yeah, few days? Stop piling food. I Are literally you? have a kilo of rat pasta and a kilo of rice in my spare room. I really, really hope think it would come that in that? April I just don't have to go to the supermarket. Mm. But I'm that worried. I mean, that's extraordinary. I mean, what I'm anxious about, actually, is the potential for us not leaving on time and for mm. the potential of certain political figures trying to reverse the result. Because I think the, the damage to the fabric of democracy and the democratic process in this country mm. that would be caused if Brexit were delayed, stopped or completely scuppered would be absolutely enormous. I think you two are going to go on discussing this, but I've got to go into a couple of other stories. Thank you very much. Good to see you, Jonathan Emmett. Thank you very much.